patient hearing and I'm very... Uh, thank you, thank you so much. And uh, my heartfelt gratitude to the entire team of IDEC and special thanks to uh, Dr. Sanjay Agrawal sir and uh, Neeta uh, Deshpande and my dear friend Shilpa for having me here. And uh, after all that talk, now is the time to talk about uh, uh, you know, time restricted feeding, where uh, we all know that there are a lot of fat diets which is uh, uh, you know uh, prevailing, uh, and you know when it comes to weight loss, we have been always juggling or manipulating the macronutrient content of the food, or even restricting certain kind of food, but. Now it is the time, we, we've been always restricting, you, okay, you've got to eat this food or not, not, or a certain type of a food, but now is the time where we also need to understand the time, the time of the uh, food, what we are eating. So basically it's the intermittent fasting which is uh, really prevailing, and there are different types of intermittent fasting. We have the ADF, which is the alternate day fasting, wherein, uh, you know, one day you are fasting, fasting uh, where you have to eat around 500 calories and the next day you are going to eat uh, uh, the diet which is ad libitum that is eat at your own pleasure and then we have the five is to two diet whereas uh, where in uh, the two days you have to be fasting you have to eat around 500 to 1000 kilocalories and the other five days you will be eating as at ad libitum and here what we i'm going to talk upon today is the time restricted eating wherein you have a eating window of eight hours and you have a fasting window of around 16 hours and this is a you know pictures say better wo than words so this is a picture pictorial uh, way how the 5 is to 2 and the time restricted feeding uh, goes on. So what exactly is time restricted eating? It is a dietary approach that consolidates all the calorie intake to 6 to 10 hours of periods during the active phase of the day. Uh, I know Geeta Dharmati has already talked a lot about the circadian rhythm. So we need to focus on eating at the active phase of the day and without no, uh, much uh, alteration of the diet quality and the quantity. And this is the most popular method is the 16 by uh, 8 method, which is also called as the lean gain protocol. It, uh, and, and it involves uh, skipping breakfast. So breakfast, eating a breakfast is not really important now when, uh, as we, and when we are talking about the intermittent fasting concept. And so many of the people are, uh, uh, you know, now sticking to 16 by 8 method. And this is also known as, uh, popularly also known as the Dikshit diet here in Maharashtra. And so when we are talking about the window period of eating, uh, you know, window period, so there have been clear improvements which has noted that after six, eight, nine, or 10 hours of protocols of uh, uh, like eating window is, uh, has given better, uh, uh, has given better improvements in the metabolic uh, health as compared, uh, you know, if, if we, and when we are talking about extending the eating window to beyond 12 hours, there is not any major beneficial metabolic effects. Now, when, uh, when we talk about the fasting period, so if you, if you want to, uh, if we think that we need to increase the fasting period, again, if we increase the fasting period, there, uh, there is less of uh, adherence because there must be much uh, pressure, you know, that if you have to fast a lot. So it, uh, it may be non-compliant also if we increase the fasting period. So when, uh, what is the, ba uh, the basic pathophysiology? We all know that if any person goes for the fasting, uh, you know, the carbohydrate for the first few, uh, uh, the energy has been used for the, uh, the carbohydrates are used for energy and later on the fats are broken uh, for the energy and the rapid loss of fat by fasting 14 to 20 hours per day, you know, we can also have uh, fat loss if you are fasting for 14 to 20 hours per day, even without exercise or any dietary regimes. So are there any metabolic effects uh, of time restricted eating? Yes, there is a whole lot of uh, benefits uh, where there is reduction in the weight gain, reduction in fat mass, reduction in glucose intolerance, reduction in uh, insulin resistance, fasting insulin. There, uh, there is reduction in the beta cell function impairment and, and there is an overall 
a better, uh, uh, you know, better cardio metabolic health if you uh, if you are trying to, uh, you know, uh, go on time restricted eating. But again, this has to be very much planned and uh, and uh, with a you know with a dietitian and uh, because you know you can't just go into ad libitum and you know you're going to eat anything and any time. So uh, that we need to understand. And so are there any evidence-based health benefits? So there's, there are number of, uh, there are number of trials, human trials, but unfortunately there, the limitation is that they are of short duration. What we can see here, it's uh, of only one to 16 weeks and even the sample size are very small. Again, there are a number of trials uh, uh, where which we see. And they all have shown that there is a decreased body weight, there's decrease in fat mass, decrease in fasting, uh, you know, fasting uh, uh, glucose and HbA1c is decreased in insulin resistance and insulin sensitivity. And also in the leptin levels has incre uh, decreased and decrease in fasting insulin levels. And at the same time, there is also increase in adiponectin. And there are few questions which are unanswered when we are talking about time restricting. So which time of the hour is better, whether it is morning or afternoon or evening? So again, the circadian rhythm plays a very important role. So it has been seen that, uh, you know, whenever, uh, if we follow the, the fasting, the fasting in the, rest phase there is metabolic disarrangement so always try to focus fasting in the active phase of the day and are there any weight loss independent effects again uh, uh, effects of intermittent fasting on cardiovascular risk markers so yes there are some studies in humans which suggest insulin sensitivity can improve even in the absence of weight loss and again is there uh, can fasting mimic the diets which reduce aging or chronic diseases yes we have uh, we have the surrogate markers like we can see the inflammatory uh, markers which shows that yes um, it can reduce uh, aging. So are there any limitations? So there are few points to ponder. We need to understand whether, you know, if the patient, we ha if we have put them on uh, um, on this time restricted eating, so maybe that the patient may feel that, okay, the, that he does not have to eat for the next 16 hours and he may tend to eat more, you know, for that eight hours of window where he has to eat but again we need to tell them that they have to be uh, it has to be planned it has to be structured so we have to tell them about the postprandial hyperglycemia dyslipidemia and glycemic variability which may be uh, which may cause uh, atherosclerosis and here i would just like to point um, uh, our study which we have done on uh, Kavita, sorry to interrupt okay. but we are so, running short of time. Uh, yeah so which has just shown yeah i'll just finish it quickly so which has shown that a uh, high fat meal uh, may increase uh, uh, your uh, inflammatory markers as well and uh, again trf is nothing uh, is nothing new to us it has been carrying on uh, by the jainism also and are there any uh, risk uh, factors i mean to say we need to uh, carry this uh, time restricted feeding for in diabetes only with caution because if they are on medications we have to observe and we have to put them on uh, a very close monitoring and uh, it, it should not be it should not be advised to uh, children especially in type 1 or pregnant like dating women or elderly patients so uh, so uh, time restricted uh, eating yeah, was actually initiated early in the active phase shows philiotrophic metabolic benefits and uh, again in uh, uh, you know again in human trials it has shown uh, weight reductions so again we need long term large scale studies so that we are uh, able to uh, understand the better uh, that it it works better and again Again, we just like to again add a time, uh, a word of caution that whatever type of fasting, uh, intermittent fasting you're going to follow, it has to be highly individualized. It needs to be simple and structured and even consistent. And we again need to put a thought that, you know, why, uh, you know, when we are just talking about high fat, it's like why the animals do not have metabolic syndrome. So again, this is a food for uh, thought for everyone. And again, it is the evolution of man, you know, uh, with his food. And he uh, has, he was, uh, you know, a sapien. And now he is where we, uh, due to all his, uh, uh, the main 
I think the main crux is the diet, diet, and diet, and where we all need to work on. Uh, thank you, thank you, I like for having me here. Thank you.